So speaking of massive change, go for it. Oh, baby. This was a total, total shock. There was a lot of big shocks from SpaceX this week and NASA. Did you guys see this? Out of nowhere, I guess SpaceX is making a new spacecraft. <laughs> and it's called Dragon XL. Is that the only image we have of it? Because I've seen it. I've seen that image several times, but I'm kind of like, what am I looking at exactly? This is the it, only official render, yeah. Dragon XL, please. Is it SpaceX or is this a Boeing thing? This is SpaceX. Yeah. Okay. It's not the <laughs> Pro Max R. <laughs> not yet. This is okay. the XL. XL, the, the, I, yeah. We need, uh, a, okay, I'm going to start a nonprofit for space companies on how to name stuff. Because this is not it, guys. This is not it. <laughs> but this is an ex. I don't know. It's if it, if it's a. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say it, it's an extra large dragon. How is that not? How it, many people ben? can it fit? None. So this is not a crew. This is a cargo. The yep. uh, last one I heard can uh, fit what six? You said four. Mm-hmm. Four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, not impressed. So let me tell you what dragon this is. XL. Let me tell you what this is. <laughs> So the cool thing about this, this is not just some thing for low Earth orbit and for the International Space Station. This is already a signed contract. This will be the cargo supply for the Lunar Gateway. So this is actually this this not only did this solidify Gateway for me because Gateway is yeah. again you know a part of kind of is kind of part of the Artemis program ish, but it's sort of its own thing. But it's basically you know a a Gateway or in the orbit around the Moon in a really cool unique orbit that uh, it's a really like rectilinear halo orbit thing that's super weird. And, uh, but what's cool about it is it's an international collaboration. So there's already other countries signing up to do their part. Of course, Canada is gonna give us an arm for it <laughs> because that's what they do. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, Japan's working on stuff like uh, ESA's doing some cool things for it. So it's an international collaboration, which is awesome. Um, and then this is the first time I've really seen a contract like this. And this follows the same type of structure as the commercial crew and commercial cargo. So it's, it's a fixed price contract of like, Hey, here's how much we'll pay you to send X amount of cargo. However you get it there, we don't really care. But what ended up getting accepted in one is this dragon XL, which you can think of it kind of like a Cygnus capsule where it's only meant for space. It doesn't even, it will ride inside of a fairing because it doesn't, you know, it's not aerodynamic in that sense. So it'll ride inside of a fairing. It uh, is, is I think it has some unpressurized, but also pressurized volume and uh, it will not re-enter. So it doesn't have a heat shield or anything that like that is just for space. And it's just to send re- uh, supplies and, you know, food, all that type of stuff up to the gateway. So the lunar gateway, the coolest thing about this, I didn't even get to the, the fun part. This would be on top of a Falcon heavy baby. Noise. Yes. So uh, the reason is in order to get something out, you know, to, to send something to the moon, it, you have to do what's called a translunar injection. In order to give it that 4.1 uh, kilometers per second of delta V to get, it's a very low energy um, TLI. It's not, it, it because that's uh, to get into the whole thing, that the gateway is basically where it is because SLS is not powerful enough to get the Orion and the European service module any closer than this <laughs> well than this, currently um, the sls not very capable of getting anything anywhere hey <laughs> wait until my video comes out and then you can tell me about it um but basically uh the falcon heavy is capable of this tli this translunar injection um estimating about 10 tons in total if you take the the dragon capsule itself the dragon xl and the five tons of, of cargo in there within around there i don't really know for sure but the thing is, in order to do that, they will have to do, if they want to reuse the vehicle, they'll have to do a three barge landing. So that means they will have oh. to have three barges. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. two side cores will land fairly close. I don't know. We'll say 600 kilometers downrange or 500 or something. And then the center core will be screaming and will probably be something like 1,600 or 2,000 kilometers downrange. Something just nuts. So we'll, we'll see. Will it even we'll have, have fuel have? to... Yeah, like- Well, that's the cool thing. If the side boosters um, are able to stay on longer because they're not having to turn around and come back, they can basically use that boost back fuel, you know, uh, negate that and just keep going forward. So therefore the center core stays, you know, fueled down for longer because it's riding, it's holding onto those side boosters for longer. So the side Mm -hmm. boosters do more work that Mm -hmm. way. And that's the whole point of doing like a a multi downrange landing. 
Um, so yeah, it'll hold on to them basically. And at that point, it uh, yeah, the the boosters will let go. The center core ramps back up, but it still will save enough fuel to be able to do a reentry burn and a landing burn. Um, and it will be very very far downrange. Trevor in our Discord is there's no way it's sixteen hundred kilometers. I will bet you it'll be. Actually, I, I should look because my friend Declan from Flight Club, we actually finally ran the numbers. Um, I need to double check it, but it is something very far downrange. Very, very, well, we very We got another 100 push-up bet going. <laughs> 100 push-ups. Okay, Trevor, you're on. Okay, you heard bet. it here, folks. I mean, maybe Trevor doesn't Do remember. Do they have three drone trips to land on? <sighs> they just built another one recently, um, and they have just read the instructions, and of course, I still love you, but... Uh, just read the instructions is West Coast based, although I think it is now right. East Coast. But um, yeah, they they mm -hmm. they have built a third, and I yeah. So I don't really know, but basically that's what they're going to be doing for this. I would have called it cool. Dragon Heavy. Um, <laughs> that would be cool. Although the thing <laughs> is, it's not heavy. You don't want it to be heavy. It's actually probably will be lighter than a Dragon capsule, even <sighs> though its internal volume is bigger. I hate Picking. this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know well, so, so what's your feeling on the gateway in general um because i kind of like the idea of it but i also see the argument against it i used to hate it <laughs> i this uh, last year when i spoke with jim bridenstine about it that kind of changed my opinion a little bit because I, I saw where it could be this reusable uh mm. kind of like a reusable service module uh so it's in some way here's the here's the deal realistically i like it better than the international space station i think it would have a lot bigger mental and uh, you know social impact because you know it's it can be permanent presence in orbit around the moon like that will be awesome all those pictures right. the experience from those astronauts like that much further away from earth will just have a lot more striking I don't know. Oh, I see. What you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like yeah. that impact would be really, really cool and really important. You'll see just it. Get, just getting that long orbit. All the way out and seeing the moon in front and the the earth behind exactly yeah, yeah it's well, gonna be an awesome sight yeah it will be something to talk about i think and something something pretty special because i'm the international space station awesome but come on we're ready for something new well you know? it, it it bugs me that there's not there's only one space station up there yeah it, i mean to have another one and have it be around the moon it's pretty cool and, and i get the idea that like that's a little place where they can kind of serve as a well a gateway between the earth and the moon and from the moon to the outer solar system, you know, at some point further in the future. Right. But, um, no, I, I like the idea of it, but I also see the direct moon route is, is actually, you know, will you be able to see the moon station from earth? God, where's <laughs> this disembodied voice coming from <laughs> my, my video cut out cause it got too hot in here. Too much, oh. mm -hmm. too much fire okay. that you're spitting, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well what, are you, what, are you, what are you saying there, ominous voice? The question is, um, will you be able to see the moon base from Earth, like with the telescope? Uh, uh, no. I mean, unless no? it's reflecting. I mean, you'd have to have a meaty, meaty telescope. A BFT? Uh, <laughs> you would see it would have to be like literally like huge uh i mean it would almost it be have all. to be good enough to see the apollo landing sites yeah in order I mean, to see it. the base but yeah and just from earth that's with optics it's not possible but this would reflect quite a bit it'll be a lot bigger than the apollo landing sites i mean there's a chance you could v see a very faint little globe because actually one of my uh one of my friends scott ferguson who does this site astronomy live he was able to capture a couple pixels of um the solar orbiter that that took off a, a couple of months ago uh when it was when it was really far away and all it is is ends up being like literal dots like pixels mm -hmm. slightly moving across you know it, but he got it like i think it was almost out of the moon or pretty pretty far away and he was able to, to get it at that point so i mean mm -hmm. yes maybe ish but like you're not going to see like cool pictures of it. I'm like, oh, you know, not going to have like, like a Starbucks logo that they're going to put up there. <laughs> well, eventually, obviously. <laughs> I, well, I we so. talked about that before, right? The uh, who was doing it? There's like a fake meteor shower thing that we were doing, mm -hmm. and then there was another thing where it was like, oh. yeah, soon they're going to have advertising in low Earth orbit, basically. Right. Um. That, yeah. Something's got to pay for it. <laughs> Planet <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope so. Oh, well, there's you know commercial operations, but yeah, uh, pretty cool Falcon Heavy. We're gonna see way more of it. Super stoked. I, I love Falcon Heavy missions, and this just firms up Gateway. Super, super, super awesome. Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.